One of the biggest fear factor of starting off as a PC gamer is getting a PC. Getting a PC can feel really easy, but for beginners, it's a different story. You know, should I buy a pre-built? If I'm building one, which parts should I get? So if you are a beginner to PC gaming and you are willing to build a PC, which you should, this is a tutorial for how to build a PC. Let's get right into it. First, begin by checking all the components you've bought. To end up with a complete PC, you will need a CPU, motherboard, RAM, graphics card, storage system, power supply, case, and a CPU cooler. If you made sure that you have all the components, it's time to move on to the next step. Open the box of the motherboard and take the motherboard out. It will be wrapped in an anti-static bag. Be careful not to damage the motherboard since this is the base of our PC. Place the motherboard on top of the motherboard box. This will prevent potential short outs and keep your motherboard safe. Now it's time to place your CPU. Take your CPU out of the packaging while handling it with care. Make sure you keep the golden pins on the bottom undamaged. Pull the latch on the socket up and lift up the cover. Line up the golden triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the CPU socket. If the pins are correctly lined up, pull the latch down. On AMD motherboards, it will have a different mounting system but it won't be too different. Once the latch is pulled down and your CPU is safely mounted, it's time to mount the CPU cooler. For beginners, stock coolers are a great way to start off, since the thermal paste is pre-applied and are easy to install. Line up the latches on the cooler with the holes on the motherboard. If they are properly lined up, push it down until it makes a clicking sound and turn the little latch thing to keep it in place. Then, plug the 4-pin fan connector that is on your motherboard. Next, RAMs. RAMs are one of the easiest part of building a PC. Open the notch and line up your RAM with the slot and push it in until it makes a click sound. Before we put our motherboard into the case, pop the IO shield on the case. That won't be too hard, we'll be able to do it. Now place the motherboard in the case and line them up with the standoffs on the case. Screw the included screws in the case to secure your motherboard. Usually, it's better to test your components before you mount it in the case, just in case they are dead on arrival, but I was kinda lazy at the time, so I didn't. Do as I say, not as I do. Now let's plug in the power, USB, and audio pins on the motherboard. They are labeled on the motherboard and the pins on the case, so make sure you plug them in correctly. For our graphics card, remove the PCIe cover at the back of your case. Make sure you keep those thumb screws somewhere safe. Get your graphics card and open the notch on the PCIe slot. Pull your card in until the notch closes. Bring back your thumb screws and screw them in as shown. Once you secured your card, mount your storage system, whether it's a hard drive or SSD. In this case, we will be using a hard drive. Slide the drive in the slot and secure them with screws included in the case. For our PC to boot up, we need power. Grab your power supply and remove the lid on the case. 
slide your power supply in and put the lid back on. Secure them with screws. We first need to power our board. To do that, grab the biggest cable. That is the 24 pin power connector. Plug that in in your motherboard. Next, grab a cable that has 8 pins on the end. This powers the CPU. Plug that one in your motherboard too. Grab another cable that says PCIe on the end. That will power our graphics card. Also, plug that in. Now, we are going to connect our hard drive to the motherboard. If you look at your motherboard box, you will most likely find a cable. That is called the SATA cable. It connects your hard drive to your motherboard. Plug that into your motherboard and plug the other side onto your hard drive. But without power, our hard drive wouldn't work. Find a cable that says SATA at the end from your power supply and plug the cable right beside the SATA cable. Last thing, I forgot to film myself connecting Molex connector to power the fans, but that's not that hard. You can do it. Now that we have all the cables plugged in, it's time for cable management. This is the boring part. After all the hassle, it should look something like this. Not the greatest job, but the side panel closes, that's all there is to it. Power the whole thing on and plug it into a monitor to see if it boots. If it does, congratulations, you built yourself a gaming PC. If it doesn't, go through the steps and see if there was anything wrong. Thank you for watching, I really hope this video helped people to get into PC. If you liked my video, please like it. For more content like this, please subscribe and as always, have a good day.